is going to be part of uh, uh, part of my message from last night. And um, I, I truly believe, church, that we are at a definitive moment in time right now. Each one of us, we are at a definitive moment in time. God alone knew when he would place us into our life, this timeline, we were chosen for a time such as this. And so, this is a definitive moment. And um, the Lord is the strength of our life. Our lives, our old self has been nailed to the cross, and it's Christ's life that now lives in each one of us, each one of us. The life that we're living is Christ's life. Without God, nothing is possible, really. But with God, all things are possible. And we belong to Him. To Him. We are His children. We are His worshipers. We love Him. We exalt His name. He even calls us friends. He has placed us into this timeline, in this world, at this time. And I believe this is, this is the time right now right now, where it is time to stand on his word more than ever before, surrender our hearts daily, daily to him, and say, Lord, use us, use each one of us in the community, use each one of us, because really, all these, the nation, the community, the families, it's all, it's all intricately involved with each other, and so this has to start within each one of us. We already mentioned this. Revival has to start within us first. It's not just something that's going to explode. It has to start within each one of our hearts first. Lord, lead us to a place where our hearts are ready to be used for revival. Because when we are at that place, then true change can change in our house, in our families, in our communities in how we interact with people, how we conduct business, how we shine Christ's love everywhere that we're given opportunity to do that. This is a time to love, not to shrink away from love. This is a time to love and stand on God's truth, His everlasting truth and promises. Each one of us have been blessed with each and every spiritual blessing. We have the Holy Spirit that is within us that is with us all the time. That Holy Spirit that hovered above the waters in creation, He is with us. If we are walking in His will, surrender to Him, humbly to Him, there is nothing that we cannot accomplish in Him, in Christ Jesus. So, honestly, I'm going to read a little bit from last night. If honestly, we look at our nation 20 years later, I read a message from Billy... Reverend Billy Graham, he had delivered three days later at the cathedral in Washington. Um, and so we read that message and then um, there were some thoughts placed on my heart. Uh, it's such a stark measure. Um, at that time, like Kevin had said, and each one of you here, uh, if you weren't old enough to, to witness it, you've heard about it, but there was something that happened that was palpable. Not, not only were we shattered and we cried and we grieved and we couldn't believe that it was surreal, but something started to change. There was more love. There was more commonality of people. There wasn't division. There wasn't... There was, there was this. Christ calls us to love. To love. And we need to get back to that. We need to get back to that. We need to get back to love. We need to get back to growing closer. Closer to God. Living his word. Standing on his promises. And sharing that truth wherever we go. His light that shines from us is a beacon. Is a beacon. And a house built on a hill with that light cannot be hidden. Lord, use, use us. Use each and every one of us and our friends and our families. Lord, use us to be part of that. 
The enemy of our souls has penetrated every facet of government, leadership, young people's education, media, news, distancing the commonality of people in general, the perpetuation of false information, dissension, worldly wisdom, worldly values, immorality of every kind. We need a move, but we serve a God that moves. Amen. Our God moves. Our God is able. Our God is able to do more than each one of us could ever dream, could ever think, could ever imagine. He is a God that is able, and that is the kind of God that we serve. I pray that God stirs our hearts, each one of our hearts, and cultivates in each one of us, starting with me, what is necessary so that he may use his church, each one of us individually, or his church. We have beautiful places that we worship. This is a beautiful place that we worship. But we are the church. We are Christ's bride. So that we may become the action arm that he uses for this move. That we can stand on, like we had seen earlier, Second Chronicles. There's something that really stands out in that scripture. Well, the whole scripture stands out. But if my people who are called by my name, which we are called by his name, we love the name of Jesus. We exalt the name of Jesus. We worship the name of Jesus. We belong to the name of Jesus. If we are called by his name, which we are, and we will humble ourselves, we pray and seek his face and we turn from wicked ways, then I will, not maybe, I'll think about, I will, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I ask, awaken Lord, your sleeping giant, your sleeping giant, which is the church, your bride here on earth. Yes, there's so many different denominations, but there is one core value. It's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the truth of the Word of God. And by that, unite us, unite us. Use us as your action arm in our families, within our communities, and ultimately that that would spread through so that godly appointments, godly people, godly legislation, godly ways, God prayers back in school, you know, just things can turn around, but we have to stand, we have to stand on God's promises and, and humble ourselves before Him. We have been blessed with every spiritual blessing. You have given us the keys to the kingdom. We have the authority to bind and to loose. The authority to use your holy name. We have, been, we have the authority to use that name of Jesus. That name that is above every name. Jesus Christ is the rock upon which we must build our foundation. The Lord referred to himself as the stone of Israel and then emphatically stated that he that buildeth upon this rock, the cornerstone, shall never, shall never fail. Lord, my prayer is that each one of us here today, that you would not only in our lives, but in the lives of our families, in the lives of our friends, and in the lives of their loved ones, Lord, draw our hearts each and ever closer to you. Allow us to stand closer and closer to your truths. Lord, allow us to be used as you so decide to use us in our families, and our communities. And Lord, we know that with you, all things are possible and that things can turn around. We know that because you have promised us that you will hear us if we call upon you and we turn from these ways. You will hear us and you will heal our land. And you have said at the end of that, you will heal our land. You are the God of healing. You are the God of miracles. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We love you. We exalt your name. We know that this is, this is the time. 
but real change can start. Let us be the change first, and, and then use us. Use us, Lord. We bless your name. We bless the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.